Today we know that the moon causes quite a lot of differing effects on planet Earth. And it's quite likely that in the past it had even more effects as the moon was much closer and at some point even had quite a lot of volcanism on the surface. We actually explored one of these ideas in one of the videos in the description because one of the older studies even suggested that ancient moon as it was much brighter because of volcanism might have provided another light source for early life. But in the last few billions of years there's also been a constant exchange of materials between our own planet and the moon. For example, some of the meteorites recovered by the Apollo mission turned out to be extremely similar to planet Earth, suggesting that these rocks came from planet Earth as a result of some kind of a major collision. And likewise we expect quite a lot of meteorites and possibly a lot of other material came from the moon and possibly deposited on planet Earth as well. But as of today, nothing major has ever been discovered. However, extremely recently, some of the scientists proposed that there might have been something major happening on the moon approximately 33 million years ago that potentially resulted in some of these craters, but more importantly, resulted in a major exchange of materials between the moon and our own planet, which is now visible in some of the ancient fossils. And more intriguingly, it all happened around the same time as a relatively major extinction event that still does not have a very good explanation. All of this happening roughly around 33 million years ago. And so in this video let's discuss some of these new discoveries, some of these new propositions and how all of this relates to our own planet. But before we start speculating and before we start making propositions, let's start with the facts. One thing we know about the moon for sure is that it has a very large deposit of helium-3 on the surface. A nice atop of helium that's somewhat rare on our own planet and is generally only found in minute quantities coming from inside the planet, but is definitely present in large quantities on the surface of the moon. And that's because the surface of the moon has been exposed to the radiation from the sun for billions of years, which eventually created a kind of an abundance of helium-3 on the surface of the moon, mostly embedded in the upper layer of regolith. Something that does not exist on the surface of our own planet, because here the atmosphere and the geological activity pretty much destroys everything really quickly, but something that exists in even larger amounts on planets like Jupiter and Saturn. Also intriguingly, in the last few years, there's been a lot of talk about helium-3 as a potential source for nuclear fusion. In essence, there's been a lot of talk by a lot of different companies, and even NASA itself, about the possibility of somehow harvesting all this helium-3 from the lunar surface and then using it for nuclear fusion right here on our own planet. Now that's something that's been proposed and discussed for many years now, but at the moment it's still very impractical and will be just extremely expensive and somewhat difficult to achieve. I mean in theory it's definitely possible, it's just there are quite a lot of problems. One major problem is that, even though the theory here is pretty sound, helium-3 fusion requires super super high temperatures, so yeah, nuclear fusion is still quite unachievable even today. We'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. Still, even back in 2015, a lot of scientists were actually making propositions on how we could potentially harvest all of this and then turn this into unlimited energy. But that's not really the point. The point is that helium-3 is all over the surface here. And so the question is, could some of this helium-3 made its way to our own planet, to planet Earth, sometime in the past? Now it might not sound like a big deal, but turns out that something was actually discovered in some of the ancient fossils and by looking at various ice cores coming from Antarctica. Intriguingly, some of these samples came from as deep as 2 kilometers below the seafloor, so a lot of these cores were shielded from everything for pretty much millions of years. But one of the more intriguing discoveries here was once again that presence of helium-3. And it turns out that all of this was detected as if it suddenly arrived to our planet approximately 30 million years ago, or I guess like more like 33 million years ago. I'll explain why this matters in a second. But the thing is, it was never really assumed to be the moon. And there's a really important reason for that. How exactly would that happen? Now actually a much more likely scenario and a much more likely source would be some kind of a large meteorite, or I guess asteroid. These also contain helium-3, and can actually deliver large amounts of it all at once, especially if they come from certain locations in the solar system. Turns out, there are two craters on the planet that might have been created around the same time. We have the what's known as Chesapeake Bay Impact Crater, 
most likely formed around 35 million years ago, and we have the Popigai crater from around the same time as well. Both of these craters were created by somewhat large rocks, and in theory could explain all these observations of helium present in the sediments. On top of this, this would also explain a somewhat mysterious sudden extinction event that happened around 33 million years ago as well. We've discussed this previously, and you can find more information about this in the description below, but in a nutshell, approximately 33 to 34 million years ago, a large proportion of mammalian species, and even ocean life, suddenly decreased in diversity, or basically disappeared, which of course by definition makes this an extinction event. Now interestingly, around the same time, there was a major global expansion of grasslands, coincided with a large decrease of tropical forests, with all of this implying some kind of a major climate change, which we now believe also resulted in the appearance of Antarctica and the sudden period of glaciation, something that lasted for approximately 10 million years, essentially making this one of the more recent extinction events that still does not have a very good explanation. And though the asteroid collision could maybe explain some of this, with volcanic eruptions potentially explaining some other observations, there were just too many shortcomings that could not be explained. One of them was actually the timeline. The collision itself happened at least one or possibly even two million years before the actual extinction event. Actually, both collisions. This one happened approximately 35 and a half million years ago, whereas this one happened possibly around 35 million years ago. Whereas the extinction event very likely started at least a million years after. Likewise, if this was related to asteroids, we would probably see deposits coming from asteroids in a lot of deposits of ancient ice. In other words, by looking at these ice cores, we should actually see certain signs. For example, a lot of asteroid collisions will often also result in a layer of iridium. For example, here's the very clearly visible iridium layer that was created 66 million years ago, making a pretty strong case that the dinosaurs vanished because of a collision from an asteroid. And so, if 33 million years ago, asteroid collisions have also created similar effects, we should be seeing iridium and helium inside a lot of these ancient cores. The problem is, we don't. Helium, yes. Iridium, no. Which suddenly puts a huge dent in this idea. It's quite unlikely to have been an asteroid. Or just to rephrase this, based on the observations from these ice cores, and the detection of helium that came to the planet approximately 33 million years ago, it's very unlikely that all of this was the result of a major asteroid collision. The source had to be something else. And the only other source we can think of, at least at the moment, is the moon. It now seems that it's quite likely all of this mysterious helium that seems to be present all over the planet in fossils that are 33 million years old very likely was the result of something happening on the moon. For example, a large amount of collisions on the surface of the moon happening around 33 million years ago do have a chance of creating a kind of a helium cloud that would reach out all the way to planet Earth, depositing large amounts of debris on the surface. And so all of this moon dust could actually be the source of this unusual presence of helium-3. And because the moon doesn't contain iridium as do asteroids, it would actually explain the chemical observations. But in order to produce these observations, you would have to have very large impacts. Impacts happening approximately 33 million years ago. At the moment, trying to discover these craters and time them very specifically is actually beyond our abilities. Today we can provide various estimates for the age of craters on the moon, but they're not really that exact. The estimates will usually have at least a few million years of error. And so unless we find a crater that we think might be responsible for this, and then collect samples from there, we're not going to know for sure. But assuming that the scientists behind the recent study are correct, the next question is, so then what exactly did this do to our planet? Did this actually somehow change the climate on the surface of the planet? Dropping the temperature by anywhere from 7 to 11 degrees Celsius, or 13 to 20 Fahrenheit, for what seems to be millions of years. And also starting the glaciation period in both Antarctica and the Arctic. Now, if this is somehow related, this will be a really intriguing discovery. At the moment, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. There actually seems to be more connection to what might have happened with the various currents on the planet, because around the same time, we also had a sudden change in oceanic currents and the development of Antarctic Circumpolar Current, something that still exists today 
and thus have a very high chance of lowering the temperature of the planet. And so, yeah, the actual extinction is still a bit of a mystery. There's still no clear explanation for what exactly happened. But when it comes to the signs of that helium-3, at the moment, the moon explanation does make a lot of sense. It's not clear exactly what happened here and how all of this helium-3 ended up on the planet, but some kind of a major asteroid collision with the surface of the moon would definitely make sense. But, like always, we're not going to know until future discoveries, until future studies, and until more examinations using other samples, other ice cores, or other fossils from other locations. Which means we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos as well. Thank you for watching, subscribe, check out all the links in the description below, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.